How's it going everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are setting up the Zod Drift RC plane. Now it is a glue-free assembly RC plane and when fully assembled it'll measure in with 877 millimeter wingspan and the front to the rear measurement is 688 millimeters in length. It is a 2 to 3 S capable 3 channel GPS equipped RC plane. Now this plane is optimized for lift, gliding and soaring and it is not intended for aerobatics. So here is the fuselage, the main wings, the tail boom and the horizontal stabilizer. The fuselage has compartment bays all with magnetic closures. So you got the battery bay in the front and you have a JST connector as well as the XT30 connector with magnetic closure. You have the flight controller bay. I already have the flight controller in there. Also magnetic closure and another bay on the bottom. Also with magnetic closure. The motor is the 1406 2600 kV sunny sky motor and it comes with two types of props it comes with a tri-bladed 3x5 hq prop for use with a 3s battery and also a dual bladed 5x5 prop for use with a 2s batteries now the recommended batteries are 900 to 1500 milliamp for the 2s you can also use the zod lion pack 3500 milliamp 18650 2S pack batteries that'll provide a super long flight time and also 800 to 1100 milliamp 3S batteries. Now the ESCs or the ESC is the 30 amp Zod 2 to 4S ESC and there is one 8 gram servo for the rear flaps and there's two 4.3 gram servos, one on each wing. You can get the kit, the PMP version or the FPV version, which I have here today. Now the FPV version will come with the Zod VC400. It is a 40 channel, 5.8 gigahertz, pit mode 25, 200, 400 milliwatt switchable all-in-one VTX. It has 600 TV lines and has a 120 degree field of view. Now it will fit on the inside of the nose of the plane right in there just like that and it also has a little groove there for the antenna to slide right on in. Now they also provide you with a velcro strap to keep the VTX secure. Now it does look like any small size all-in-one VTX should fit in there. So in case this one gets broken, you will be able to fit a, another brand VTX or you can just buy the same one and fit it in there. So connect the JST connector already prepped and that will power source the VTX from the main battery. The VTX input is from 7 to 28 volts. So no issues with the use of the 2S or the 3S batteries. So short press to change channels and a constant on of the first LED means it's set to channel one. Now there are eight channels. So long press for two seconds and the second LED will blink. And then you can short press to change bands. A constant on of the second LED means band A. So mine is set to band A. There are five bands. Now long press for four seconds until the third LED blinks. And then short press to change the power output. And constant on means it is in pit mode. And here mine is in pit mode. So again, there's the pit mode, 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and 400 milliwatts. Now long press for six seconds to enter the call sign setting. And then short press to change the character and then long press for two seconds to change to the next character. Once finished, long press for six seconds to exit. And to hide the call sign, you can long press for eight seconds to hide it, 
and then long press for eight seconds again to bring back the call sign. And we also have the Zod Co-Pilot Light Autopilot System Flight Controller. Now it is a lightweight flight controller with stabilization mode and manual mode. It is a plug and play flight controller and it comes with an adjustment board so there is no need to connect it to a computer and there is no need to solder. Now it can be used with a S-Bus receiver or PWM receivers. Now here I'm using it with the Hobbymate D16 FR Sky receiver with the S-Bus connection. Now other receivers like the Radio Master R161, the D16 FR Sky receiver that I just done a review on will work just as well. So on the transmitter, a new model needs to be set up with no mixes and it has to be set up in the AETR channel configuration and a fifth channel set up with a three position switch to change modes. So I have it bound to the Radio Masters TX16S and the channel five is set to this three position switch. So up is the return to home mode. The middle position is the manual or the acro mode and the bottom position is the balance or the stabilized mode. This model also comes with the Bayesian BN220 GPS module. So simply connect to the flight controller marked GPS with the provided wiring harness. So there's two GPS modes, the return home and the geofence modes. So the position of the RTH radius dial on the adjustment board will determine the mode. So if set between one and two as shown in this diagram, it will be in the geofence mode. So you can set the geofence radius by setting the dial closer to the one for less distance and towards the two for more distance. The range is 100 to 300 meters. Now, if set between two and three, it will be in the return to home mode. Okay guys, so now the fail safe setting on the transmitter model needs to have the channel five set to the correct position to activate the fail safe return to home. So to set up fail safe return to home, go to the model setup page and choose custom for the fail safe. So scrolling up and where it says fail safe mode and it says not set, go ahead and hit it and rotate it to where it says custom. Hit it, go over to set, hit that. And what you need to do is scroll down to channel five and hit it. And right now the switch is all the way down. So it is showing the angle mode or the stabilized mode or the balance mode as they call it. So if I hit it to the mid position, it will be in the acro mode. And if I hit it all the way to the top, now it's all the way to the left and that will be the return to home mode. So I want the return to home sensor to sense that the switch is all the way to the top position. So rotate the dial all the way to the left. To minus 100. So when the receiver fail safes, it will trigger the return to home mode in channel 5. So putting it together is fairly simple. Install the tail boom and lock it in place. Place the push rod in the middle hole of the servo arm. Lock it in place. Install the horizontal stabilizer and use the thumb screw to lock it in place. Connect the clevis to the last hole and squeeze to lock it. Now install the main wings. So install the spar first. Now there's no servo wires to mess with because of the pre-positioned plug and play connectors will connect when the wing is installed. It is all plug and play. Lock the two main wings using another thumb screw. Connect the servo wires to the flight controller. The throttle servo wire is the one connected to the ESC, so put that where it says throttle. Make sure it goes in correctly. 
ground, positive, and signal. The aileron servo is the double servo that goes into just one servo. So put it in where it says aileron. And the elevator servo runs all the way to the rear. Put that one where it says elevator. We also got the adjustment board connection. So connect the board and we're going to skip the GPS so we don't have to wait for it to get GPS lock. Now power up the transmitter, power up the drift, wait until it configures. Now we need to set it up to the T-tail configuration. So long press the set button on the adjustment board and cycle through till LED 1 is off and LED 2 is on. Put it in the stabilized mode. Place the plane on a flat level surface. Bolt sticks to the bottom and in will calibrate the gyros. So after that has been completed, now you can tilt the nose up. Now the tail flap should go down to counter. And left wing up and the left flap should go up. And the right wing up and the right flap should go up. Now if it responds the wrong way, then you can adjust it with the adjustment board. So with the adjustment board, you are able to adjust the aileron and the elevator gains as well, and also reverse the output. A detailed explanation is shown in the user manual. Simply turn it the opposite way from the 12 o'clock mid position. So if it is set to nine o'clock position, turn it to the three o'clock position to reverse the output. Now test out the sticks. Left roll should raise the left flap and right roll should raise the right flaps or aileron. Pull down on the stick and it should raise the rear flap. And if it responds the wrong way here, then you will need to reverse the channel on the transmitter. Now disconnect and remove the adjustment board. Connect the GPS module. The GPS module fits right in the magnetized cover and there's also a plastic cover to completely cover it up. Now I'm leaving my receiver in there, double-sided sticky tape and just keeping the antennas sticking out. The magnetized cover should hold it in place. Next, install the VTX, connect it to the JST connector and install the prop. Now we are ready to fly. So remember there is no yaw control or rudder control since it only has three channels. So it is a perfect RC airplane for beginners with built-in fail-safe return home. So that'll conclude this video of the Zod Drift RC plane assembly and setup. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and We'll see you again next time.